Stevie Wonder's song Superstition has one of the best grooves ever recorded, and today I'm going to show you that it's so good, Stevie's like the universal groove donor. You can put this drum groove on anything and instantly make it better. And when I say anything, I mean anything. We're gonna roll up to roll it up. Can I kick it? Let me work it. Ah, never mind, that's a bad idea. Superstitions from Stevie's 1972 album, Talking Book. This song hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and Rolling Stone has ranked it as the 12th greatest song of all time. Superstition came about because Jeff Beck had agreed to play on Talking Book and in return, Stevie would write a song for him. Jeff Beck came up with a drum beat and Stevie started playing along and they had a rough demo by the end of the day. So yeah, technically Jeff Beck came up with the drums initially, but his version ended up very different than Stevie's. Jeff Beck was going to release his version first, but his album got delayed, and once Barry Gordy at Motown heard it, he insisted that Stevie release it on Talking Book. Jeff Beck's version is much more rock-driven and was released the following year. This version is different from Stevie's, and the groove is completely different. The main reason? Other than the horns, Stevie is playing every instrument you hear on Superstition, including the drums. Oh, those sweet, sweet drums. So here's the part of the video now where I go completely left field. You go, what? And then I try to make it into a metaphor and help explain what I'm trying to say about the song. Do you know what blood type you are? Stay with me, this will make sense in a moment. So there's a bunch of different blood types, A, B, A, B, and O. There are positive and negative versions of each, so that's a total of eight blood types. Right now, you've got one of those blood types running through your veins. Without going too far into this, basically, if you're type A and you get in an accident or whatever and you need a transfusion, you can't receive type B blood. Your body would reject it, attack it, and it would just be really bad, okay? But fortunately, there's a little bit of crossover compatibility between blood types, and there's even one type, type O negative, that's the universal donor. Type O negative blood can be used in a transfusion of any other type of blood. It's the only blood type that can do this. And here comes the metaphor, Stevie Wonder's superstition is like O negative blood. It's the universal groove donor. You can put it with just about anything, and it works. Now let's listen to this groove, figure out what makes it so good, and then we'll do some groove transfusions after that. All right, so here's the drum groove. So the kick is mostly four on the floor. Just so it's just a kick on every beat with a few embellishments here and there. And the snare is mostly just two and four. There's a few fills here and there, but that's the main part of the groove. Kick on one, two, three, four, snare on two and four. Very straightforward, very on the beat. Now the hi-hat, however, this is where the magic is. This is where the feel is. The hi-hat has this swung 16th note pattern that doesn't really repeat much, if at all. For that reason, it feels very human. On top of that, this song wasn't recorded to click, so the feel is all Stevie. The whole thing has this freedom to just sway this way or that way slightly and come back. It feels human. It feels organic. It feels like an amazing groove. Get it, Stevie. I've talked about this idea of a groove grid before, but basically, if you're not playing with click, you gotta bring your own sense of time and feel to the table. And if you're human, you're probably not gonna play perfectly accurately on the grid. The analogy here is plotting points on a hand-drawn grid instead of one printed by a machine. Where's the grid? This is important. I did a video all about this. Where's my f Basically, I had printed graph paper and plotted the points out here, and then I drew out some graph paper with my hands. It was very imperfect and I plotted the same points and it looks pretty different. Depending on the player, the tempo, and a bunch of other factors, the groove grid is a little different. But the grid that Stevie's laying down on drums is incredible. No click, just pure Stevie laying it down with a solid kick and snare, that funky hi-hat acting as the grid that the other two were drawn on. The groove is coursing through his veins, so to speak. The, you know, the blood analogy. There are other elements to the song, but this drum groove is a huge reason why Superstition feels so good. That hi-hat especially. Even before the rest of the song kicks in, just with the drums, you can recognize the song. It's one of those rare, wholly unique grooves, even though it's so straightforward. Stevie's unique grid that he's making with that hi-hat is the life force behind this song. Remember how I said this song was the universal groove donor? If you're type A positive, then you can receive a blood transfusion from type A blood or type O negative, because that's 
as the universal donor. So even if that's not what's originally in your veins, it'll work. It'll make you feel good. I mean, presumably, if you're in need of a blood transfusion, you're feeling pretty bad. This metaphor is getting kind of icky. Let's just keep moving. This song was released in the early 70s, so let's mix these drums with a song from every decade since. Doctor, it's time for a groove transfusion. the song didn't have that feel to begin with, it works. It feels good. Some of those grooves are, let's say, type A negative, but that's completely different from superstition. But because it's the universal groove donor, it works. I mix these drums with a bunch of different songs, but on Superstition itself, the rest of the track features key bass, Stevie's voice, and a horn section. And then there's one other thing heard on the track, multiple layers of clavinet. The clavinet is a specific type of keyboard instrument. It's basically an electrical clavichord that was introduced in the early 60s. Now, hold on. I just said clavinet and clavichord. Here's the difference. A clavichord is an old instrument used through the Renaissance, Baroque, and classical eras of European music, which, if that doesn't mean much to you, that's basically like the 1400s through the 1800s. This was a quieter, compact instrument largely used for practice because it couldn't get that loud on its own. And so I know you might be thinking, oh, so you would just practice on clavichord and then perform it on piano. But the piano hadn't even been invented yet. That doesn't even come along till the 1700s. So while you might practice on the clavichord, you'd probably perform on a different different keyboard instrument like the harpsichord. The mechanism that hits the string in a clavichord or harpsichord is different than in piano and it's much more harsh sounding. It also doesn't have dynamic control, so the way to make it feel louder is just to play more notes. Why are we talking about harpsichords? Stay with me, there's an insane mashup coming. I can't promise that it's good, but I can promise that no one has done this before. Just one more step and then we'll get there. This era of music, European pre-piano harpsichord heavy music, has a few different main figures, but none bigger than Johann Sebastian Bach, who wrote a ton of music. If you've played in an orchestra, you've probably played a Brandenburg concerto. If you formally studied the cello, you've probably played a Bach cello suite. And if you've studied piano, you're probably familiar with the well-tempered clavier. Clavier just means keyboard, which could refer to the harpsichord or clavichord, or in modern times, the piano. This is a great practice tool because it has a prelude and fugue in every major and minor key. Need to get some keyboard reps in? Open up the well-tempered clavier. Oh yeah. Oh, wait, 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 that's it. So Bach wrote a great practice tool for the harpsichord and clavichord. This gets picked up by pianists and has been a staple since. The clavichord is then modernized in the 1960s as a home electronic instrument, the clavinet, and Honer thinks it's just gonna be a good practice instrument for people who wanna play Bach properly. But then Stevie gets his hands on it and does this groove transfusion, injecting his soul, feel, and incredible groove grid into this instrument, adds his drums on top, and the result is the 12th greatest song of all time, Superstition. Okay, but Stevie is playing a clavinet, the modern electronic instrument. You couldn't take a piece from Bach's well-tempered clavier, say the prelude in E flat minor, same key as Superstition, and try to inject Stevie's feel into that. You'd have to be mad to take a Bach piece, a 300-year-old keyboard classic, play it on a harpsichord and mix that with Stevie Wonder? That's a bad idea. If the first series of mashups were a groove transfusion with type A, this is a transfusion with type B. Uh, B's for Bach. And while no one asked for this, we did it and it worked. 
mostly? Now there is just one catch with type O negative blood. While it can donate to any other blood type and be fine, it can only receive other O negative blood. And I think the same can be said of superstition. We put this superstition drum groove on Lionel Richie, on Tribe, on Beyonce, and it all worked. On Superstition itself, Stevie is putting that groove with a modern equivalent of an old instrument that Bach loved, and we even put some Bach directly on those drums. But if we're gonna mash up Superstition, keep it recognizable as Superstition, keep the vocal, but change the underlying groove, that groove also has to be type O negative. It's gotta be from someone else who understands incredible feel, understands the subtleties that make a groove feel good. Someone equally soulful, equally funky, Someone with impeccable taste. Someone like... Very superstitious Writings on the wall Very superstitious Letters not to fall The 1970 James Brown song, You Done It, is an instrumental that was reworked as From the Love Side by Hank Ballard for the album James Brown's Funky People Volume 2 from 1988. James Brown understands groove. He understands feel. So when hip hop producers in the late 80s were looking for great feeling drum breaks to sample and loop, he served them up funky drummer on a silver platter. But that's a whole other story for another video. Actually, that's in this video right here. 